Over time, all oil and gas wells lose flow volume. Inconsistent flow, chattering, and hammering are a few common symptoms of an oversized valve for your flow volume, especially with pressure regulators. In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert a pressure regulator from full port to reduced port to quickly fix this common challenge. Hi, I'm Justin with Kimray, where we help energy producers solve their biggest control challenges. When your well production begins to fall off, you may find that your valves are now oversized. Valves will start to let too much production through and then overcorrect, leading to chattering or slamming. In larger three inch or six inch valves, this slamming can be very forceful, damaging the products and the piping. The good news is that there is a solution that doesn't require purchasing a new regulator or even changing the size of your pipes. Standard regulators are configured as full port. By changing a few internal components, regulators can be converted to reduced port, effectively changing the inner valve size without replacing the valve, piping, or even the need to take the product out of line. To find what components you need, open the technical specifications for your product on Kimray.com. Using the parts list table, compare your valve size with each of the six items that have standard and reduced options. This chart below shows the components needed as well as the repair kits and tools to complete the job safely and easily. Special tool codes can also be found in the installation, operation, and maintenance guide on each product page. In this video, first we'll show a 3 inch regulator conversion process with 6 components. Then we'll show the process with a 2 inch regulator which only requires 2 parts to be swapped. If your product has been in service, we highly recommend installing a repair kit during this process. For this conversion, you will also need the following. Position the regulator in the vise so you can access the tubing. Start by loosening the adjusting screw until spring tension has been released. Use a 9 16th wrench to loosen the tubing connectors. Unthread the four bonnet bolts with a 9 16th wrench and rotate the pilot housing to remove the tubing. Remove the bonnet and pilot housing keeping the assembly together. Prop the assembly upright to protect the pilot plug. Use a 9 16th wrench to remove the upper housing bolts, then remove the upper housing from the body. Set the diaphragm aside. Remove the lower housing. You may need a flathead screwdriver or similar tool to separate it from the body. Be careful not to damage the gasket when prying the pieces apart. Carefully discard the oil from inside the lower housing. Put the diaphragm plate of the lower housing into a vise. Use a 3 quarter wrench to remove the lock nut. You'll need to separate the diaphragm plate from the assembly, but this could happen in one of two ways. While you're removing the lock nut, the stem may unthread from the diaphragm plate. This is ideal because this entire assembly will be replaced. If your lock nut unthreads from the stem, remove the ratio plug, seat, seat disc, and lower housing. Flip the assembly over, putting the stem in the vise to unthread the diaphragm plate by hand. Use soft jaws to not damage the stem. Put the new stem into the vise short end up. Use soft jaws to not damage the stem. Apply primer and blue Loctite to the short end of the new valve stem. Hand thread the diaphragm plate onto the stem. Now flip the assembly and put the diaphragm plate into the vise. Add grease to the O-rings and backups inside the lower housing. 
To prevent shearing the O-ring inside the lower housing, use a stem guide placed on the stem. Slide the lower housing over it, then remove the stem guide. Place the new seat disc, seat, and ratio plug on top of the stem. Apply all-purpose grease to the threads of the stem. Hand start the new lock nut threads. Hold the seat disc with one hand and use a 9 16th socket to tighten the lock nut. Do not over tighten because it can deform the seat. Tighten it to the point where the seat disc no longer rotates. Note that the gasket should be on the lower housing shoulder. This is part of the repair kit procedure, but for the conversion, double check that this is still in place and properly greased on both sides. Use the Kimray seat removal tool combined with a one and one quarter socket and socket extension to take out the removable seat. A breaker bar can help to get enough leverage to remove the seat from the body. This removable seat is an extra piece that you can save and reuse for other projects if desired if it shows no signs of damage. Apply grease to both sides of the gasket on the new removable seat. All gaskets put into the valve assembly must be lubricated with a multi-purpose grease. Install the removable seat with gasket into the body with the seat tool and torque to the required torque specification. Do not over tighten the seat which could damage the gasket. Install the lower housing into the body. The breather plug should face the same direction as the fittings and be between the inlets of the body, clocked just off center. Fill the lower housing with all-purpose oil until the communication hole to the lower stem is fully submerged. Being careful not to pinch your fingers, push down the diaphragm plate directly on top. Install the main diaphragm onto the lower housing assembly, making sure it is placed in a bowl position inside the lower housing. Place the upper housing on top of the lower housing, aligning the breather plug to be between the outlet holes in the body. Hand tighten the bolts using the torch star pattern. For two inch, three inch, and four inch regulators, tighten bolts to 25 to 30 foot pounds of torque. Next, mount the pilot housing and bonnet assembly onto the upper housing. Hand start the bolts, but do not tighten them all the way. Install the tubing, but do not fully tighten the tubing fittings. Now fully tighten the bolts in a star pattern to avoid any misalignment. For two inch, three inch, and four inch regulators, tighten bolts to 25 to 30 foot pounds of torque. Once the bonnet bolts are tight, Tighten the tubing fittings. Now your regulator is configured with a reduced port inner valve size and the adjusting screw can be tightened to your desired set point. For two inch regulators, the conversion is similar but with only two new components, the ratio plug and removable seat. Begin the same way by removing the bonnet and pilot housing assembly upper housing, and lower housing. Put the diaphragm plate into a vise. Use a 9 16 wrench to remove the lock nut. Remove the ratio plug and replace it with the new ratio plug. Apply all purpose grease to the threads of the stem and hand start the lock nut. Hold the seat disc with one hand and use a socket to tighten the lock nut. Do not over tighten because it can deform the seat. Tighten it to the point where the seat disc no longer rotates. Use the Kimray seat removal tool combined with a one and one quarter socket and square drive adapter to take out the removable seat. A breaker bar may be necessary to get enough leverage to remove the seat from the body. Apply grease to both sides of the gasket on the new removable seat. All gaskets put into the valve assembly must be lubricated with a multi-purpose grease. Install the removable seat with gasket into the body with the seat tool 
and torque to 30 foot-pounds. Do not over-tighten the seat, which could cause damage to the gasket. Reassemble the valve as previously shown for the 3-inch model. Now your regulator is configured with a reduced port inner valve size, and the adjusting screw can be tightened to your desired set point. For questions about this process or any other challenges your production site is facing, contact Kim Ray's product support team online or by phone.